That's one over the equivalent capacitance. Uh, Therefore, the equivalent capacitance is 12 thirteenths. Okay. And then we tack the units on. Questions to hear. So why is the um, equivalent the C seventy two? Why is that twelve over thirteen? Uh, because when we add the when we take the reciprocal of each of these and add them together, that's the reciprocal of the equivalent. So at the end, we have to flip it back. From a unit point of view, this technically is one over two farads, one over three farads, one over four farads. This is thirteen one over farads, and we need farads in the end. So it would have to, from a unit point of view, it would have to. Flip. Let's do another one where people are hopefully look slightly more comfortable here. So, uh, let's... by the way, these are huge capacitors. Uh, don't get near one like that with your bare hands if it's charged. Uh, they get a five farad and a seven farad capacitor. What is the equivalent capacitance? Repeating. Notice that the equivalent capacitance is less than either any of the individual ones. That will always be the case. In parallel, the total should be bigger than any of the individual ones. In series, it should be less than any of the individual ones. About to give you a more complex problem. So questions here before I give you the more complex problem. <clears throat> All right, so now, Starting point here, I'll throw in. Yeah, we'll do that. What is the equivalent capacitance? Now, I drew some angles in there. I could have done it all in a straight line. I could have swung this up here. Originally, I was going to connected slightly differently. Uh, I guess we need numbers here. So let's make this one farad, two farads, three farads, four farads, five farads, and six farads. So now we don't have, it's not just straight up, I'm using one equation or I'm using the other equation. We need to use both. First, let's identify junctions. Now, some of you will look at this and you immediately know how to do it, and that's great. Uh, based upon past experience, there are some students who will look at this and they will be flummoxed. So, I'm gonna identify junctions. This is places where the electrons, as they flow, could choose one path or another. So I have a junction here, I have a junction here, 
uh, I have a junction here, I have a junction here. You said where a lead charm can shoot a path? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Technically, I just drew the, the T, the moments where it sort of tees. Uh, technically, that whole thing is a junction. That whole thing is a junction. That whole thing's a junction. That whole thing's a junction. Right. So as I've drawn the junction, are there, is it really obvious that are there any two in parallel or any two in series? <coughs> what, Katie, you, you nodded. What, what are you thinking? Except, so we do, they do have common junctions, but there's something else stuck in there. So uh, the two, one and two are not in parallel. The bottom right. Those? Yeah. All right, so let's add those two. We do it bit by bit. So if we add those that are in parallel, what's the equivalent capacitance? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this, except I'm gonna clean it up some as we go. So I've got this junction here where I've got the two and the three. And down here, I've got the one and they connect and they connect to the four and the four connects to now an 11. <clears throat> and just so that since there's a whole lot of parallel lines there let's put out a serif to my ones there we go <clears throat> now is it Clear that any of them are series or parallel. Two and three are in series. All right, so let's add those two together. So that's one half plus one third is one over the equivalent capacitance of those. Uh, so that's five sixths. And so the equivalent capacitance is six fifths. So now I'm going to rewrite this. So I've got. This is six fifths, or uh, please want to do like the fractions or the decimal. Got my one here, four. Now what? Four and eleven are also in series. Okay. Get that out here. <clears throat> So I got my 1.2 here, I got my one. Uh, so that's one fourth plus one eleven is 15 forty fourths. So this becomes 44 fifteenths, just shy of three. Now what? Um, just add up the parallels. So we now have a 2.2 and a 44 fifteenths. So adding those up, so 1 over 2.2 is 5 elevenths plus 15 forty-fourths, which is 35 forty-fourths. And so my equivalent capacitance is 44 thirty-fifths. Now I'm doing it in a fraction form just because I'm doing it on the board and I don't have a calculator sitting in front of me. So don't feel like you have to use that. Uh, I will point out that there's a lab that there's a good chance. Uh, I do some semesters, I don't do other semesters, depending upon timing. It's majorly complex, but it turns out that if you round off, if you do the decimal and you round off to say two decimal places, at some point the lab just completely falls apart. Uh, you need to take it out far more decimal places 
uh, on that particular lab. Now something like this on a quiz or test, yeah, there's a certain amount of close enough, but just recognize rounding off sometimes leads into trouble when it comes to reality. So the claim is that if I could replace this entire mess right here with one capacitor that is 44 35 farads, and it would do the exact same thing. Questions? This is approximately 1.24. I'll forget units at the end. Is that, um, is that one point one two and then two point two? Or is that some values? This is one I, I had six fifths and I just read it as a decimal. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Now this next bit is just purely for the videotape. <laughs> now, hopefully you can see the excitement of a problem like this and the possibilities. Because now I could say, hey, you got five capacitors. A two farad, a three farad, a four farad, a five farad, and a, uh, let's go with a 1.7 farad. Come over the structure where the total capacitance is, and then I give some limit. Let's say the total capacitance, you have to use all five of them. Uh, you can't have one just sort of stuck out in nowhere. And uh, come up with an equivalent capacitance of. 2.7 plus or minus 0.1 farads. Now, I, since I made these numbers up on the spot, I don't know if this actually is doable. When I get a problem like this, I, I basically come up with some manipulation, come up with an answer and go, oh, okay, it can be done. If I'm feeling saucy, I do it again just to make sure I didn't make a careless error. And if I really want to do it right, I, the next day I do it again because Presumably, if I do the same problem twice in a row, I would be used to doing the exact same thing. And then, often a problem like this, I'll just throw in another capacitor, which could vary. And then you have a variable capacitor uh, that has a range of, let's say, one to five farads. And so that you have a little bit of play in there. <coughs> that was another one of those. Like, I'm really excited by these problems. You know, ignoring the fact that if you don't see it immediately, you could spend a half hour trying to do it. But it's really not as bad as you think, though. <laughs> I know five farads here is bigger than what I want. So therefore, five has to be in, par in series with something. Because in order to reduce the capacitance, I put it in series. To increase capacitance, I put it in parallel. So matter of fact, all three of those have to be in series with something. And so you can start, as you start working on it, go, well, I need to get a bigger number, so let's put it in parallel. I need a smaller number, let's put it in series. All right, so questions to hear. All right, so let's see what I've ignored. We've done that. We've done that, that, that. Only thing I haven't done is the energy stored in a capacitor, and I don't care. So <laughs> I, I don't do anything with it, and so I just generally like bypass it. <laughs> the formula is right there. I think one of the homework problems it deals with it, and it's just a matter of see the formula, plug and jug. Uh, the biggest trick there is recognizing the capital E in that formula is energy, not the electric field. So let's talk about quiz, master set, tests, 
you know, neat junk like that. <clears throat> Today is the third. Oh, Two. I don't think I've posted the lab. I would like to do the quiz. I don't know how far you want to stretch it out. There's one particular semester where I finished the material for test one for the first test, and I put it, the, the test actually so far out that we finished the material for the second test before we took the first test. Uh, that was the 252 class, so. All right, so I guess the two options are we set it up for the test to be a week from Wednesday or two weeks from Wednesday. Pardon? Two, two weeks there, Javez, you were suggesting? It doesn't matter. I was going to say a week. <laughs> You're flexible. One week, but flexible. Yeah. Uh, Michaela seemed a little bit uh, more adamant for the two weeks. But if we go, if we go there, we get the longer we go, the longer we go. So we have a week with the other stuff. No, but let's say, remember, we have only one physics equation. The rest is just derived from that. You just start with Coulomb's law <laughs> and just go. Derive the entire course. Here's Coulomb's, the test. There we go. The test. Here's Coulomb's law. Derive everything we've done. Will the test be on a Wednesday? Uh, the tests are going to be on the lab day because you got the, the full time. All right, so uh, just, let's see if there's a groundswell here. Uh, in a week and a half. Wait, what day is that? What day? That would be the 12th. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I uh, think we got another one, and then the 19th. Wow, Michaela and Beth, they got three, four. Uh, that did seem to be a groundswell for, as one person put it, ripping the band-aid off. All right, so the quiz on chapter 19, it's only, uh, if it makes you feel better, it's only two chapters. The quiz on chapter 19 on Friday. This, this, this Friday. Friday. Yes, this Friday. Yeah, I figured it'd be nice to get it done before the test. The master set due Monday the 10th. Now, <laughs> all right, now that some realities are sinking in, I'm not forcing you to change your mind, I'm not suggesting one way or the other. It, either way, it does not affect me a great deal which day we have it on. So, so 152, right now, test 1A. All right, on the 12th. <laughs> so, who is good enough, good with the schedule, with the test being on the twelfth, a week from Wednesday? I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> One, two, cool. three, four, five. Who would rather push it off another week? <laughs> now, if we talk it, if we talk about it again, it's going to flip back the other way. Suppose I served ice cream though. <laughs> All right, so with the uh, reconsideration, the quiz on chapter 19 will make a week from today. Oh, so it's the, the 10th. Yeah, the quiz is on the 10th, Monday the 10th. Master set, due Friday the 14th. Test, February 19th. Mm -hmm. 
So for Valentine's Day, you could study. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that's test 1A. All right, uh, pardon? Now, if you only paid half attention and you're thinking that the quiz is this, is this Friday instead of next Monday, then you'll just be prepared for everyone else's, and you get to relax on the weekend, and everyone else will just be worrying. Or not, but oh, I, I guess based on Tom's test scores, I'm some of you uh, don't worry at all. Any other questions? We still got a couple minutes here. I want you to imagine that there's a fire in the room. Where am I? Uh, let's just put it back there. What is going to determine how quickly all of you get out of the room? How big the fire is. Okay. Uh, all right, so how big the fire is, that would be uh, the equivalent of voltage. Okay. How organized you are. Uh, so, all right. So, how fast you are would be the equivalent of how fast the electrons move. Uh, so, and so as the wire heats up, they, they will move faster. But if moving faster without the organization, so as all of you ran full speed towards the door, what's what are most of you going to do? <laughs> and. If we organize it somehow, what could we? How could we reorient things so that it's much easier to get through? A single file line. <laughs> yes. Wow, I was thinking move the tables around, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess the single file line would be the equivalent of superconductor. Anyway, all right. Most of you would run into things uh, as you tried to get out the door. The bigger the voltage, you would bump into things more, but you would be moving faster uh, with a higher voltage. You would move faster, or more of you would move. You're bumping into things. In physics, we call that resistance. And we use the symbol R for resistance because we are so clever. Is this part of chapter 20? Yes, it is. Awesome. So, an electron, if I have some voltage here, so this would be the high side and the low side, the electron basically would move and bounce and moves and bounces and moves. So that's basically the path an electron takes. Now, it's traveling a lot faster than what's known as the drift speed. The drift speed is if you have, if you have, you know, like if you're doing uh, speed check by aircraft. You know, you have two marks right here, and you're seeing how long it takes to get from one side to the other. That's that will determine drift speed. But the actual speed is much faster than that. But it keeps running into things, and that is going to have to be the cliffhanger. Yeah. And since it's approaching that, it is that time of year. If you have not registered to vote, please, and you are going to be 18 by the time of the general election, please register to vote. Matter of fact, if you are, my daughter ran into this where her birthday was in October. Uh, she could vote in some of the primary uh, because she was going to be 18 by the time the general election was. She could vote in part of the primary. So if you're 18 by November, whatever it is this year, 
Uh, and you you're not registered, please make sure you are registered. What type? I said you can vote. You can? 18 before the day. You can vote. It seemed like they gave her a special ballot, so I was thinking there was only, she couldn't vote on everything. Yeah. Okay. You're limited. If you're going to need a card and you have an age, you still vote. Yes. Yeah. So, register. Yeah, ah, all right, before we start, if you could hit the... Uh,